Hey everyone, this is Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, here at DevOps Enterprise Summit London 2017. And I'm joined by an old friend and a new friend here, <laughs> both from Axelos, uh, Karmar Karu. Karmar, welcome. Good Hi. to have you here again. And Akshay Anand, that's right. also of Axelos. Hey, that's correct, yes. Great. Both of you gentlemen are presenting here this year. Uh, later today, in fact, yes. And. Um, well, our audience at home, by the time they see this, you would have already presented. We <laughs> can't help go back, you know, it's the laws of time and physics. <laughs> but why don't you uh, give us a quick preview on, on what each of you are presenting on. Karma, would you like to go first? So we have a joint presentation and the title is, I tell you keep using that word, I don't think it means what you think it means. Okay. Um, Great quote from the Princess Bride for yes. those who don't <laughs> yes. know that's from. So essentially, ITIL, like the, the word ITIL has been used in, in many conversations about what, what works, what doesn't work, what the challenges in the organizations are. And ITIL is very often associated with, with slowness and unresponsiveness. And, and sometimes even like it stops from working or like it stops other people from working. Whereas many of the things that we now see as part of DevOps or part of the lean IT movement or whatever it might be are very much aligned with what the guidance in ITIL actually says rather than, let's say, how it has been used in the past. If it has been used in the past to address specific types of challenges in a specific way that was possible. And in today's world, other ways of doing this are possible, including automation, uh, leveraging cloud, and so on. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to go back to the basics of, of ITIL and ITSM with the guiding principles and things like this to show what does it actually say? What does it actually mean? And what is the value of using ITIL for an organization, big or, big or small? Got it. There, there's, a, there's a really great uh, example that Kaima has in his presentation, which um, came out of some conversations we had last year. If you think about software development um, and how it's evolved over the past, back in the day, people would ship software on floppy disks or CDs, and floppy disks, if you remember what those were. <laughs> um, and the, the cost of recall, not just the monetary cost, but the reputational cost, the brand cost, all that, were tremendous. And so you had to really get your software to as close to 100% perfection as you could before you burned your CD or, or you know, your, your floppy disk. golden disc. image. Exactly. Uh, and that control mentality has stayed. It's not evolved at the same pace as the technology, uh, which goes to what Kaima was talking about, uh, that uh, these traditional control methods originated from a point in time because of the constraints, organizational technological constraints. And the, the principles behind them haven't changed. The technology has changed. <coughs> what you can do with the technology has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, and so organizations need to, to recognize that it's not just the technology evolution, that it's also the control evolution, the service management evolution that sure. has to go hand in hand. I remember installing a fax program and then reinstalling it uh, every few months because it kept breaking. 28 floppy disks every time, one by one by one. So now we imagine a situation where um, the developers release a new version of that every week or every day. Did you how, how, like, how would I get it and what would I have to go through to actually install it every time? So that was not possible. But today all these things are possible. So some of the controls, as you said, some of the, the kind of things that we have put in place in past to, to kind of address those challenges, those challenges are not there anymore. We can be more agile. We can be more nimble. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, you know, I'm probably a little older than both of you. For me, the, the pivotal moment was uh, Word Perfect when it mm -hmm. got to about 10, not of the f five and a quarter inch floppy disk, but the three and a half mm -hmm. inch floppy right. When it got to 10 of those, that's nice that we need a, bit, a better way. But you talk about CDs, my, my sons are running around here. They don't even know what CDs <laughs> are anymore. Right? Everything's digitally delivered via yeah, a cloud absolutely. or internet connection. Because can you imagine if we had to update the old way as often as we update? But it, you know, we were talking a little bit off camera before we started today. It really, you know, though that has changed, we don't use floppies anymore. There is still inherent the right way of doing things that, that are right, no matter whether we talk about idle or DevOps or Scrum Agile or any of these things, right? We, there, there is still truths, if you will, right? That, that kind of go forward with this. Absolutely. And, and Kaimar, to your point, what you were talking about earlier here is, you know, idle may not be what you think it is, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, especially 
you know, in the DevOps world and, and, and some of the, the newer kids who don't know what CDs are, <laughs> You know, they tend to think of, oh, Idle's very process-driven, right? Or, and Agile is only about project, you know, Scrum's about project management. But these are systems that have evolved over time mm -hmm. to deal with real-world problems, real-world situations that organizations are dealing with. And, and process is just a sequence yeah. of steps. That's all. Right? So you, you probably have some repeatable things that you do in the enterprise, in enterprise IT, and that's what your process is about. And you maybe had to do things manually in the past, which you can now automate. You still need to do many of those things, if not most, but you can do them in a better way, mm -hmm. right? And when we talk about the, the underlying principles, which link things like, like well, Scrum or Agile or, or YTSM or whatever it might be, is to focus on the customer. Right? So it's focused on the value delivered to the customer. And on this the is the underlying principle everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's why we talk about IT service management. It's how to deliver value for your customers through services using technology. And, and because, so in the current ITIL guidance, it is expressed in, in many words on 2,000 pages. Right. Uh, so this is why we, we brought out the, the guiding principles. So to, to make it simple. So these are the nine things that matter about ITSM and ITIL and why we do these things. And then we can use them as like a network of constraints or, or, or guiding principles to help us to make the right decisions. Right. So not to put anyone on the spot, but can you give our audience the nine principles? <laughs> you can come to our stand. We have a booklet with all of them. Okay, actually, <laughs> and if they're not, well, then if they're watching here, they're not at our thing. Is there a place online that you could download that? Yes. 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 Axelos.com. Just um, go to Axelos.com and it's the nine principles. Yep. Uh, I think there's a, there's a series of videos on YouTube as well where each of the uh, nine guiding principles are, are explained succinctly, briefly, uh, okay. just to give you an understanding. There are mini booklets as well that you can purchase through TSO, I think, mm -hmm. or on Amazon. And we're running, we're running um, a competition at our stand as well. So we are connecting the nine guiding principles to the DevOps principles. And we're asking people to flag one of the nine they believe is most relevant for them or for their organization, at the way they believe, to their DevOps transformation. Great. So we're kind of collecting these small post-its on each of the nine to see which ones people are struggling the most with or which ones they believe should be addressed first. Great and idea. we're giving away an Atari game um, as, a as a prize. No, no, there's for nothing that. like gamifying these things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. People, people like that. But you know, Interesting, interesting stuff here in that DevOps doesn't replace Scrum or Agile. Idle doesn't, I think for too long people thought Idle was somehow competitive to DevOps. It's not, it's not meant to be competitive. No, it's, it's uh, competitive or, or actively blocking, I think, is some of the, some okay. of the more negative things I've heard, right. which, is, which is absolutely <laughs> untrue. Well, it's rubbish. I mean, right? I mean, it's the idea that one is mutually exclusive of the other just doesn't make any sense. Right? I, I'd agree. There's there's something that we've talked about in the past um, at other conferences and, and workshops and so on, which is um, where does value get created? Or how is value realized? And there are so many competing definitions, and based on which definition you subscribe to, you start to think in a siloed way. So if you're, uh, and this is by no means uh, you know, disrespectful to anyone, but a lot of developers think that value is realized when their code hits production. Yeah. Um, a lot of project managers will think that value is realized when they bring their project in on time or under budget or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you take a step back and, and look at things holistically, value is realized when your customer is using your product in a live environment, is getting the appropriate amount of support or, or, or whatever it is and that they satisfied. need. And it's satisfied. They're reaping the assets yeah. that you've sown. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think that is something that's missing from the whole thing here, which is, and, and you hit it with this, it's not, though the developer may think his job is done when the code is committed or in production, or the service manager may think when the app is stood up, you know. Really, at the end of the day, we all, every organization, earns their keep when the customer gets the value out of whatever product or service they're Correct. And as, as one of the like one of the nine guiding principles focus on value, it says 
it is the customer who determines what is of value. It's not the service right, provider. You don't, you don't make that decision. Or the developer. Yeah, so the customer right. says what is of, of valuable and what is not valuable. And we, there's the whole focus about the focus on, on, on outputs versus outcomes, right? So the new function is the output. The outcome is something, something else. And it's not really the outcome for you as a service provider. It's your customer's outcome. So what do they want to achieve by using this right. service? And if you don't understand that, then you're very, like, very unlikely to deliver a service that is valuable. Right? Yeah, so you absolutely. can't guess those things. Uh, and one of the things I think, uh, to, to take that one step further, you also have to realize that what the customer find valuable changes over time and context. Um, I, I've talked to a lot of agile coaches, uh, development leads, etc., to whom value is measured in you know, story points, UX, design, or whatever. Um, but there are all these not um, uh, less tangible things that also generate value. Um, FAQs that the customer can consume, uh, support that the customer can get, um, regular patches, regular updates. Uh, so what the customer values also changes over time. So you can't be purely f product focused. Um, I, I wrote this article uh, last week where I said, we've got to change what product means and therefore what product management means. And product is now technology plus services. And product management is the technology management, so your architecture, your development practices, testing, etc., plus service management. And it's a combination of technology and service that provides the value, not just technology by itself. That's an excellent insight. Guys, we're over 10 minutes. I, I'd love to sit and chat for another hour, but it uh, wouldn't be fair to our next <laughs> guest either. Sure. But maybe we can continue this conversation, if not in DevOps Enterprise, somewhere we could do a podcast or, uh, I'd or something, it. but I'd like Over a to. beer, perhaps. Yeah. Beers are always good, especially <laughs> here in London. Absolutely. But absolutely. Kaimar, a pleasure having you Thank on you. again. Thank you. Akshay. Akshay. Thank you. <laughs> and it takes me about 10 times and then it sinks <laughs> Don't in. worry. But thank you for appearing. Good luck with your presentation today. And we'll, thank we'll you. continue thank you the very conversation. Much. Cool. The gentleman from Axelos and Idol here at DevOps Enterprise Summit London 2017. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com and DevOps TV.